Boston Talk 8576. Um, I'm going to come at you with this prospect, this heavyweight prospect. Um, he's a, you know, he's 27 years old. He only has six fights uh, with three knockouts. But it's um, Tayshaun. Uh, he's from China. They call him the Great Wall. I was looking at um, a couple of his fights, but let me tell you something about his uh, something about his background. Um, he used to be a bat. He, he started off um, playing basketball. Then he um, he did some uh, mixed martial arts, uh, kickboxing. Um, he um, beat and knocked out uh, Bob Sapp. Everybody knows Bob Sapp, the the, the big black dude, 6'7", 300 something pounds of muscle. But um, yeah, he beat him. And um, he went to boxing. He had no. He has no amateur boxing um, career. He just went straight into the pros. Um, his trainer is uh, James Buddy McGirt. Everybody knows James Buddy McGirt. Uh, he's a pretty good trainer. He got some um, some fighters. He has trained some world champions like Paulie Mahanaji. Um, Buddy McGirt uh, will teach him some fundamentals that he needs because he didn't have a. Uh, um, amateur career, which, you know, the amateurs usually help you with your fundamentals because you get to learn on the job, you know, and then you have to worry about, you know, as you are pro, when you are pro, you, you know, that, that loss goes on your record. Amateur is not that much of a big deal. You know, you can get in there, get your feet wet, learn some things, learn what you're good at, learn what you're not good at and work on those things. And, um, Buddy McGirt will be, a uh, uh, a trainer that can guide him because Bertie McGurk himself has been a champion in the eighties. Bertie McGurk, Bertie McGurk, you know, was a pretty good fighter, man. Go look him up. James, Buddy McGurk. But, um, I looked at about four of his fights and the guy is seven feet tall, 282 pounds. The one thing you want to look for when a guy is this tall, seven feet, y'all remember that other Russian guy that was seven feet, that Russian got a fighter that was seven feet that Vandal Holyfield fought that I thought Vandal Holyfield won that fight. But you want to look at their coordination. Now, him being a basketball player and a mixed martial artist, I'm, I was looking at that part of his uh, what, what he did. And I was like, man, maybe he's more coordinated, you know, than other seven footers or people that height that came into boxing. And I, I was looking at some of his fights, and his coordination is pretty darn good to be that height, to be that tall. Um, his footwork is pretty good. He moves uh, well in the ring. He doesn't uh, gallop in the ring. He doesn't look like he's about to fall over. He looks very coordinated. And I was looking at some some of his um, kickboxing uh, fights. I told you I looked at the Bob Sapp fight. I looked at another fight. And I was seeing him kicking, and he was holding his balance pretty good. So he's a pretty good athlete, and that would help him in boxing. Um, his combination punching is pretty good. I liked his footwork. I just took down some notes. His jab, he actually knocked the guy down with his jab. And his defense is not so good. I, I rated his defense a 4 out of 10. He has to work on that. And... Him being a prospect, and he hasn't he having these he having fights, you know he has he is having prospect fights type fights. He's not fighting any fighters that are real dangerous. He's fighting fighters that he can go in there and work on things, uh, not really push the guys over over, get some work in, and find out his weaknesses and his strengths. Um, he had a really good left hook and a really right, good right hand. His offensive game, if I had to rate it. Off the fighters that he's fought in a competition that he's fought at a 10, his offensive game is an 8. That's pretty high. His defense, he needs to work on his defense. He needs to work on feints because his feints will help him uh, freeze guys and keep their hands at bay, and that will help him on his defense. They won't throw as much. And his jab, I would like, even though his jab is real good, I would like to see him throw, throw more jabs and double up on his jab. Because that will keep uh, guys at bay, at bay and keep them on the end of his right hand. He has a great one-two. I like his one-two. He follow up with his right hand. He doesn't fall in. And that's, that's, that's very good. He doesn't 
awkwardly fall in like some big guys or some fighters, period, like to fall in with their right hand. He keeps great distance with his right hand. That's something that Buddy McGirt, you know, worked on him. Uh, I know Buddy McGirt taught him that because I was looking at one of the fights and they said Buddy McGirt said he was like an eight-year-old when he came into his gym. He had to teach him everything. So by him not having another boxing trainer, he went straight to a really good boxing trainer. Now, Buddy McGurk can just spoon feed him everything, and he will he will take it in, you know, as he learns it and see how he much he digests the information. But um, he acts like a fighter. Uh, I seen a fighter. Uh, I think he was fighting against uh, was it McCary, uh, Roy McCary, and he was being a little you know rough in the ring with him and and. Um, Tayshawn didn't back down. He was rough with him back. They fought a little bit after the bell. I like to see. I like to see when a guy is pushed like that in trying to be intimidated. How he reacts, if he folds or he or he or he acts like a fighter and fight back. He has toughness. I like his power. His power. His power is about an eight. I give his power eight out of ten. You knock a guy down with your jab. You knock a guy down with your left hook and your right hand. You get an eight power from me. Now, this is only the guys that he's fought so far. So, you know, the fighters that he fought so far, he gets an eight in power. Now, I, I mentioned that he needs to faint more. He needs to faint way more. Um, I believe fighters need to faint, man. It helps you see what the other guy is about to do. It helps you um, keep a guy at bay, freezes him. So, fainting is important. I, 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 he needs to move his head a little bit more, too. Oh, his body work. For a guy that's seven, fi seven foot, he went to the body awfully good. I like he, he was jabbing to the body. He threw a right hand to the body. It's, it's, it's a little dangerous for a guy that tall to go to the body because he got to give up his height. He got to bend down at his knees a little bit more than other guys to get to the body. But he has pretty good body uh, punching. Um... He's with Golden Boy, too, so Golden Boy will bring him along very well. They they did the same thing with Wilder. Wilder was like, what, 32, 33, 31, 32 fights in before he fought for the title. And I think they will probably do the same with this guy. There's no reason to rush him. He's 26, 27. Um, I believe he will be 25, 26 fights in before he fights, you know, somebody, you know, of a good caliber. Um, and heavyweights do age well, so he's, you know, he's no rush right now, but, um, he, shoot, I mean, Golden Boy will have a big market if, if he can pan out to be something in China, man, that's a big market they will be hitting, um, De La Hoya and them will have a, a good heavyweight on their hands, and, um, Wilder is only, I think Wilder is what, 30, maybe Wilder is 30 now. And they could potentially meet in the future. You know what I'm saying? If both of them, both of them can pre pretty much, you know, if they hold up and and you know uh, progress as fighter as fighters and um, have success, that could be a huge fight. He could be a huge fight with anybody in the heavyweight division because that China market is big, and it's a lot of good prospects coming up. It's a, it's a lot of in the middle heavyweights and a lot of middleweights at the top this this pretty good and, and it's not old they're all around about the same age so the heavyweight division is i say the next year to two years the heavyweight division will be back on top man it will be the the the, the golden uh division of boxing once again as long as these guys start mixing it up with each other and don't try to avoid each other and um yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep my eye on um, Tayshawn. This is my um, heavyweight prospect that I will be uh, keeping an eye, on, eye, eye out on. I will continue looking at his fights, seeing how he progresses. Um, he's only a prospect right now, and, you know, that's how I'm looking at it. Um, he has shown some good things. He's shown some not good, no, not so good things. So w the, um, the most important thing is, is to see how he progresses from fight to fight. Um, and see how, you know, he you, takes things from the gym to the boxing ring. That's that's big important for uh, prospects to be able to take what they learn from the gym to the ring and apply it in the ring. But let me know if you've seen Ta uh, Ta Tayshawn, um, seen any of his um, fights. Let me know what you think about him. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. This is Boxing Talk 8576. I'm out.